Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pager here once again with another video on DC TV because, well, it's time to talk about some Crisis on Infinite Earth stuff because there's some Crisis on Infinite Earth stuff to talk about. So Crisis itself is almost here. Technically, it has already arrived and started on all the shows, or on Arrow and Flash at least because we saw the red skies on them both this week. Uh, but for us, we have another day or two depending on when this video goes up just because I don't know if other stuff will come out that will delay this video. But yeah, a, a day or two until Crisis crisis officially starts for us. Like it is crazy to think that it is, you know, finally here. It feels like only a couple of months ago that we saw that teaser right at the end of the Elseworlds crossover where the crisis title art came up after that piece of dialogue from Psycho Pirate. But um, yeah, started from the bottom, now we're here, even though that's probably not the best quote to use in this scenario, but anyway. So in this video, we're going to be going over some final interviews and information regarding Crisis and its first three parts. There is nothing really spoilery here, just more explainers and setting things up and just getting you more excited. But of course, throughout the video, be sure to let me know all of your various opinions on what we go over and your different theories. If you have any theories from it, just uh, interested to see what you guys have to say. And of course, if you want to enjoy the video and you are excited for Crisis in only maybe a day or two, depending from when this video goes up, why not drop a like on it to do those things? Now quickly, I might have already mentioned this in a previous video, depends when this goes up, but I have launched a new Discord server. The link to it will be in the description down below. I'm really happy with how it's going at the moment. Um, so yeah, if you want to join in the chats and stuff like that, it'll be very interesting in the next, well, couple of days or a few days, might I say, when Crisis is on. I'm guessing there's going to be a lot of uh, excitement coming from that so definitely join the uh, discord server where there's like a live chat and all different channels and stuff to talk about all your favorite tv shows and just get involved in the community so yeah link in the description but the first thing we're going to go over is probably what's in the title or at least in part of the title and that has to do with the smallville clark kent or the smallville superman whatever you want to call him and the part that he does play in crisis so over the past 24 to 48 hours depending when this video goes up um, some press and media got to watch the first two episodes of Crisis. So that's the Supergirl and the Batwoman portions of the, you know, the crossover event. Now, the fact that they did not, did not get to watch the third part, that's the Flash episode, does suggest uh, something massive happens in that episode that they did not want potential spoilers to get out from. Even though this is press and media that could be trusted, all it takes is one person to mention the littlest thing to someone and that just snowballs and all of a sudden it's online. And that's happened before. So yeah, that's why they didn't watch the third part most likely. But Krypton site who uh, run like uh, Flash TV News and Green Arrow TV and those sites like that did get to speak to Mark Guggenheim who's like a consultant and like heading up, well, not heading up, but definitely a consultant on this event. And they got to talk him, uh, to him about Tom Welling and his return to Clark Kent. Now we'll leave the link to the interview down below, but this is the main question and answer I want to go over um, from it. So I'm um, here it is. So what was Tom's reaction when he was pitched the story of what Clark Kent would be up uh, would be up to in the present day? He was terrific. We got on the phone with him and basically pitched him everything. And actually, the scene that Don Whitehead and Holly uh, Henderson wrote was already done. So we just emailed it to him. And he was like, I love this. He basically said to me, you guys have written the one scene that I can't say no to, which was really, really nice. Now, pretty much this does confirm that there's at least only one scripted scene for Tom Welling. They may have added more. We know, thanks to John Cryer, who's playing Lex Luthor, that there were scenes that weren't even written that they did. There's actually a bunch of scenes that weren't written in the script that they included in the crossover. Now, there could be a scene like that with Tom Welling. Maybe they wrote it just for him with no Lois Lane in question. So maybe this is just a scene with some other characters and Tom Welling, like, te that, like that's teased in the most recent trailer. And then maybe there's a, a scene or two with him and Lois Lane. So... Don't expect too much Tom Welling, um, like just don't because you're going to get disappointed because personally, I think this Clark Kent will be a decoy or like an accident that they go to while looking for the kingdom come Superman. I think that's the actual person they're looking for, but maybe they get misdirected and land at this earth with this Clark Kent. Um, this will be in part two, the Batwoman episode. So don't get disappointed if you don't see it in part one. But I think this is like their journey to find the Kingdom Come Superman and they just come across this um, other Clark Kent or Superman in the process. Now, if Crisis on Infinite Earths for the Arrowverse appearing on TV isn't enough for you, well, in about a week from now, there will be more for you to enjoy as Walmart in America will be releasing a special Crisis comic that will include stuff from the original comic from the 80s, but also some new stuff, especially, or well, specifically, sorry, uh, from the Arrowverse. Now, this will be written by Mark Guggenheim, who I've mentioned already, as well as Marv Wolfman, who did Crisis back in the day, and who will also have a cameo in Crisis at some point as well. Now, I'm not going to go over the entire interview, as that could 
could be its own separate video, but I will leave the link to it in the description down below. But that bonus Arabist stuff included in here is stuff that couldn't fit in the actual episodes for Crisis. But to me, it seems it will include characters that they just couldn't get the rights to maybe, or couldn't get the actors for, for the, you know, for the actual event. So, you know, putting them in a comic story that ties into the TV event is the next best thing. So this is where we will get some, you know, characters from the Arabist or other DC shows, you know, from the past brought in that weren't possible and maybe if some even some new characters that we are yet we are yet, uh, we are yet to see in live action involved in this story as well so yeah if you live near walmart and are available next weekend head on down there and pick one up but guggenheim did another interview with entertainment weekly where some stuff on the creation of crisis and just general behind the scenes stuff was brought up and this is how that went so first mark was asked about what it was like taking on arguably the most famous comic story in history I felt so much pressure. We all felt enormous pressure. There's only one crisis on the infinite earths and you only get to do it once and we're terrified about screwing it up. One of the things the comic always promised was that worlds will live, worlds will die and things will never be the same. There were characters who died, new characters were introduced, the whole status quo of the universe changed. I hope that everyone feels that we've lived up to that. In fact, when we pitched it out to the studio, Warner Brothers TV and network, we had corresponding covers for the 12 issues of the comic that matched five episodes. So in regards to this, like, I think it will live. I think they're just going for like different like homages and, you know, homages and stuff like that to the comic. Um, in regards to like characters dying, I think we're going to see a decent, well, not a decent, but multiple characters die, but some of them might be like side characters that maybe aren't, you know, relevant to certain shows at the moment. But in regards to new characters, we know that Ryan Choi is being introduced and it seems that that character is going to be um, a character we definitely see in the future. Like it was sort of leaked that he's in Legends but there's nothing outside of that, like in regards to like set photos and stuff to suggest he's on Legends post-crisis, um, unless he comes in right at the end of the season, who knows? But he's definitely one of those new characters that will be introduced. But Guggenheim went on to talk about Oliver Queen and the challenges around his arc, as well as some other focuses of the crossover. We basically spoiled our own story by telling the audience Oliver is going to die at the end of season seven. Working out, quite frankly, just plot twists and surprises and reversals, that was an interesting challenge. I think the original Crisis comic provided a lot of points of inspiration. Even if it didn't give us the answer to the test, it inspired the answers. While we honor the Barry and Oliver relationship, what's been really, really nice is developing the relationship between Kate and Kara. We really just teased it at the end of the, uh, of, of the Elseworlds last year with the world's finest reference, but we really get a chance to dig deeper into that and have those two characters supporting each other much in the same way that Barry and Oliver have been supporting each other in previous crossovers. With regards to Legends, which is an ensemble show, the crossover focuses primarily on Sarah, Caddy Lotz's character, for a variety of different reasons. Certainly related to what happens with Oliver in the crossover, you also see that the events of the crossover sort of kick off Sarah's emotional journey for the season 5 of Legends. We really come out of the crossover with Sarah having a different uh, perspective on things. Now really, there is no massive surprise that Kate and Kara's friendship will have a focus. You know, it makes sense seeing uh, the bromance between Barry and Oliver is coming to an end. Apparently, there's a Supergirl Batwoman crossover late this season. I don't know if that's true or not. Um, I think there's meant to be one. Watch this space, I guess. In regards to Sarah as a main focus of Crisis, I think that's just in regards to the characters of Legends. I think that's like how he's worded it there. And I think that makes um, sense because um, Brandon Routh will be like, I guess, like the most... Uh, with Sarah will be the, you know, those two Legends characters or Legends actors will be in the crossover the most, but Brandon's obviously playing multiple characters. He's not playing just one character like, you know, Katie Lotz is with Sarah. Um, well, we don't even think that she's playing one character. Um, so it makes sense that she would have the biggest storyline to come out of it. Now, for those that weren't aware, just like uh, that Crisis comic from Walmart, Guggenheim is actually co-writing the Arrow portion of the Crisis event with Marv Wolfman, and this is what he had to say about that. I could not have asked for a better experience. It just worked out extremely, extremely well. Marv's, uh, Marv's pages came in and they were brilliant, like unbelievably brilliant. Such great writing, so vivid. I literally didn't end up changing that much. Marv's interpretation of Lex Luthor in particular is genius. What phenomenal, phenomenal material for John Cryer. So yeah, it is just cool to have Marv Wolfen not just cameo on the crossover, but also write some of the crossover. Like that's amazing. It's the ultimate endorsement for this epic event to have the person that created it, you know, be there and, you know, help, you know, bring it to life. 
And finally, this is what Guggenheim had to say, uh, Guggenheim, sorry, had to say about Brandon Routh's return to the role of Superman. It's fun because Brandon gets to not only play Superman, but also Clark Kent. And watching him in inhabit those two roles, I say two roles because he plays them obviously very different from one another. We also had the opportunity to see Brandon act opposite himself because Ray Palmer is in the crossover as well. We certainly wouldn't want him to miss an opportunity for Superman, played by Brandon Routh, to interact with Ray Palmer, played by Brandon Routh. We really felt an obligation to visit all of the different corners of the DC universe that we could get our hands on. It's exciting to see all of the different ways that uh, that has come together. Now, let's be honest. That is cool. I didn't think like the Adam and his king uh, and like the Kingdom Come Superman or this Kingdom Come Superman would be in scenes together for the obvious reason of them being played by the same you know actor. But the fact there might be one scene at minimum with them, I think is just really cool. But to finish off the video, Kevin Conroy, who of course will be playing Bruce Wayne or Batman in live action for the first time in Crisis, spoke to TV Insider about Crisis. Now, I'm only going to go over two questions and points of interest. The entire interview, which has much more, will be linked in the description down below for those that are interested. But um, firstly, he was asked, What can you say about this Bruce? In Mask of the Phantasm, Bruce falls in love with Andrea Beaumont, uh, ba Beaumont sorry, and he discovers that's what life's really about. He tries to get out of his vow to his parents and he can't. His fate pulls him back and he realizes he can't escape his fate, so he's doomed not to, lo uh, not to know love. This Bruce in Crisis is the result of 30 years of living that way. It's 30 years of giving and giving and giving and giving and giving and never having any love to replenish his soul. And this is where we find him in this version. He's a very bruised individual. Now you can sort of tell that, you know, that he's really just pushed himself to the ends and that's why he's got the exoskeleton and stuff like that. So in regards to his time in Crisis, I'm interested to see what they do with him. It should be very intriguing. And lastly, this was the final thing that um, well, that we're going to go over from that interview. Are there any Easter eggs in your Crisis appearance for fans who have followed your career as Batman? No, but there are Easter eggs to other iterations of Batman or other stories from Batman. Because I noticed that I slightly altered a line during a recording. Very slightly, I said, and instead of but, or something like that. Very minor, and they stopped and the script person came over and said, no, it has to be exactly like this because this is a reference to this story. A lot of the lines are very specific references the audience might get a kick out of. Now that is cool, like Arrowverse does a very good job in regards to like little references to past whether it's movies the actual comics or just past tv shows or even past movies that another you know actor might have been involved in so there's no surprise they're doing this but just having like kevin conroy you know the voice of batman the quintessential voice of batman say that stuff that's going to be awesome but yeah guys that's all to go over as i said all those links to those various interviews will be linked in the description down below as well as my discord server if you want to join it if you enjoyed the video it would be awesome if you could drop a like and it shows support let me know all of your various opinions in the comments section down below and of course if you are new to the channel make sure to subscribe and yeah i'll catch you guys later goodbye <laughs>